God is good. Amen. And there is a word from the Lord this morning. If you would, I want you to turn with me to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 through, through 16. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 through 16. When you find it, I want you to stand with me as we read the word of God. Stand if you're able. Hebrews chapter 4, starting at verse 12 through 16 is what we will read. If you're here in the sanctuary and you don't have your Bible, share with somebody who's been near you. And if you're watching me right now on Facebook, YouTube, or our website, we do invite you to join us for Sunday morning service, 9 a.m. at 4121 Alfred Street in the city of New Orleans, 70122. The book of Hebrews. Chapter 4, verses 12 through 16. If you dare say amen. 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 And the word of the Lord says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, right. piercing evil even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joint and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto his eyes, to him whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was at all points tempted as we were or are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. Amen. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace so that you might obtain mercy uh -huh. and find grace in a time of help. Whenever you need God, he's right where he yes, needs to be. Yes, Amen? Yes, yes, yes. All you have to do is call on the Lord. Amen? And he will answer. Yes, he will. Amen. Amen. You know, and I love the way uh, uh, Paul phrases Verses 14, he says, Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. And I'm just going to focus on God's word. And that is my topic for you this morning. We have this great high priest. Amen? We have this great high priest. And this high priest is Jesus. Amen? Anybody know that Christ is all you need? Amen? Yes. We have a great high priest. Great high. And all we have to do is keep looking unto him. Our high priest is Jesus. And guess what? He sees everything. He knows everything. Amen? Yes. No creature is hidden from his sight. Amen. All things are open and laid out in the open. God sees all. God knows all. Yes. And God loves you. God cares about you. Yes. Amen? Yes. You know, you might feel like you're walking through a desert of discouragement. But I'm telling you this morning that Jesus is an oasis of blessings. Amen. So don't be discouraged. Be encouraged. God has given us a high priest. A great high priest. You know, he's safe and he's secure and he's your savior. Jesus said, no man answers the Father except through me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. You can trust the word. Every single word that Jesus ever said, you can trust it. Yes, can. Everything Jesus yeah. said, you can believe it. Yeah. Now, I know sometimes we will have questions. Sometimes we'll have uh, debates about the word of God, but never debate a question Jesus' word. Amen? Amen. What he says, he means it. That's right. Yes. The word of God can discern your thoughts. The word of God can discern your heart and your intention. And that's the reason why, that's what God judges you by. God looks deep inside and he judges your heart. He judges what's on the inside of you, amen? That's the reason why Jesus said, it's not what goes into a man that will defile him. 
He said, it's what comes out of your mouth. That's what will defile you. Amen. We were talking about this morning about how people say things. And you know, it's what defiles you. How you say something, what you say is the thing that will defile you. Not what goes in a man. And that's what Jesus' word. Those are not mine. Those are Jesus' word. Amen. It's not what goes in you. It's what comes out of you that Amen. will defile you. Right. Yeah. God knows your heart. And guess what? God judges your heart. As a matter of fact, in verse 13, it says, Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. Nothing is moving around that God don't know about. Right. Nothing has happened that God don't know about. Amen. And there's so many things that are happening in the world today. It makes us ask the question sometimes that people will say that. Well, where is God? Where was God when this happened? God was right where he needed to be. Yeah. God is sitting on the throne. Yes. Amen. And we hear it a lot. But God is getting ready to move. God is getting ready. God is dead right where he is. You know, God is our king. He was our Lord. Amen. He is the creator. You don't need to get up for you. You need to get up for God. Come on and pray for this morning. The king is going to get up and come to you. You get up and go to the king. Yeah. Exercise faith. And when you show faith, show your faith with confidence. That's the reason why the Bible says, come boldly before the throne of grace. Amen? Because the word of God is quick, powerful, and sharper than two, any two-edged sword. And let me tell you something. The word of God cuts both ways. Yeah. It is a double-edged sword. But I want you to understand this morning that we have this great high priest. You know, and I call it Jesus. Amen. Yes. yes, 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 yes. Jesus can feel your pain and he knows what you're going through. Our high priests have gone through some of the same things we have gone through. He was despised by people. Some of y'all despised by folk. Yeah, amen. Yeah, yeah. But he was despised. He was rejected of men. He was a man of sorrow. He was acquainted with grief. And he, he know that, 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 that our faces from him. He was despised and he was esteemed not. But the Bible says surely he bore our griefs. Yes, he did. Uh -huh. And he carried our sorrow. And we, es we esteemed him to be stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But I want you to know that he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chance that of our peace was upon him. But by his strife we are healed. Somebody ought to pray to God this morning. So God went through some of the things you went through. Amen? In the form of a man. You know, our high priest is acquainted with the kind of grief and sorrow that we've come to know. Yes, sir. He was acquainted. He knows about it. Amen? He's not telling you about something he didn't go through himself. Yes. You know? That's the reason why sometimes we'll tell you and we encourage you. We used to do it with a little song we used to sing. Have a little talk with Jesus. Amen. Tell him all about yes. your problem. Yes. He'll hear your feeble cry. Yes. And he'll answer by and by. Amen. Amen. Just have a little talk with Jesus. It'll make it right. Amen. Amen. Yeah, praise him this morning. Amen. The word of God is quick, it's powerful, and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And the boy, the word of God says, if you abide in me. And my words abide in you, then you shall ask whatever it is you will, and it shall be done unto you. And that's the reason why I'm always trying to teach you. When you are praying to God, pray your prayers in the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Amen? Yeah. Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, in my name, you will, yeah. you will get it. That's right. God will answer your prayers. Yes, but you got to pray in the name of Jesus. Right. He's your intercessor. Yeah. You know, and sometimes we'll go there, oh, God bless me. Well, then God, God hears that. But do it correctly. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, Lord, help me. In the name of Jesus, Lord, guide me. In the name of Jesus, Lord, teach me. In the name of Jesus, Lord, provide for me. In the name of Jesus, Lord, take care of me. In the name of Jesus, Lord, bless my family. In the name of Jesus, make a way out of nowhere. Amen. Not come when you want him to come, but it's always on time. Somebody ought to pray about this. The Bible says in the, in, the, in the scriptures that we read this morning, it says that we have a great high priest that has passed through the heavens. You know, in other words, when you think about something, you know, the scriptures, there's a scripture that tells us that he dreamed that behold a ladder that was set upon the earth and on top of it, it reached into the heavens and behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. That was Jacob's dream. Jacob's ladder, climbing Jacob's ladder. What Jesus, Jacob was trying to get us to understand is that 
God is in the heavens and God is in the earth. God's angels is moving back and forth, taking your prayers, taking all the blessings of God. Take your prayers up to God and take God's blessing back down to you. So Jesus is our high priest who's doing the same thing, amen. He sits right now at the right hand of the Father, interceding on your behalf. He looks into the earth, he sees what you're dealing with, and he takes your prayers into the king. He's right there sitting next to God Almighty, and God, he will intercede on your behalf. He will bring about the blessings you need in your life. You just gotta keep on trusting in the Lord, amen. That's Jacob's dream, but that's God's prayer. That's God's work for us. He's working for us. He's praying for us. He's interceding for us. Amen? As a matter of fact, Jesus once told Peter, he said, you know, Satan is looking to sift you like wheat. Amen? In other words, Satan is looking to destroy you. And even though Peter was walking right there with Jesus, he was taught hand-picked by Jesus. But Satan was still had his eyes on him. Oh, and that's the reason why I tell you, sometimes when you decide to give your life to Jesus, yeah. you know, we had some people, our, my, my young people here were just, just baptized in the Lord, gave their life to Jesus, amen? Mm -hmm. You didn't do nothing but make that devil mad, amen? That's right. Amen. But don't you worry about the devil because he has no place in your life, amen? amen. Jesus is stronger than the devil, amen? Yes. He has nothing on you, you know, and, and when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's great spiritual insurance, amen? Amen. Your place, your seat is already reserved in God's kingdom. Oh, yeah. You don't have a thing to worry about, amen. The devil can't touch you, amen. And but 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 what I'm saying is, Jesus said, I'm going to pray for you, Peter, and I'm going to make a way for you in the midst of everything that's going on. That's what Jesus is doing for every single one of you this morning. Thank you, Lord. He's interceding on your behalf. He's Thank making sure that Satan does not sift you like flour. But I'm telling you, he's gonna come. Oh, yes. He's gonna challenge you. He's gonna try to discourage you, amen. Oh, yeah. That's why he brings all those kind of obstacles in your life. But every obstacle that comes in your life, you look at that obstacle as an opportunity to get closer to God. Amen. Come on and praise him this morning. Why? Because we have a great high priest. A great high priest. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Jesus is the high priest for the believer. Because there's, you know, when we find that we trust in Jesus, he becomes our connection to God. You know, and he keeps us connected to God, you know, and he has compassion for us. Amen. As a matter of fact, think about what Jesus went through. You know, sometimes, you know, you may struggle with problems in your life. You know, some of us are struggling sometimes to pay the rent. Some of us are struggling to pay our mortgages and so on. But Jesus knows all about that. Amen. You just keep on trusting him. Amen. And the reason why I'm saying that is because Jesus himself, he went through stuff like that. He was homeless. As a matter of fact, he said foxes have holes, birds have uh, uh, places that, you know, to lay their nest. But the Son of Man has no way to lay his head. Yeah, he didn't have a house. He just went from place to place. And wherever he went large, his way large. Amen. But he was about the business of his father. He was about the business of taking care of those born again believers. Amen. That's what he was all about. You know, so he was home. He understood the problem of being without a home. Amen. As a matter of fact, the Bible scriptures that says while he talked to people, he was in a place, and this you'll find this in the book of Matthew, he was in there preaching and talking to some of the people in there. They didn't understand what he was talking about. Uh -huh. That's why sometimes, you know, sometimes when the Bible said that he who have an ear, let him hear. In other words, listen with understanding. That's right. You know, because sometimes people listen, but they're really not listening, you know. Mm -hmm. they, they will hear, but they, they're not really listening. But the Bible said that while he talked to people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without and they were desiring to speak to him. As a matter of fact, they went to a place where they know Jesus was talking. And they went in there because they were probably thinking, you know, what is he doing? You know, Jesus was from uh, Nazareth, you know, not a very good place. As a matter of fact, can anything good come up out of Nazareth is a question that was asked, amen? You know, sometimes people judge you way about where you come from, you know. Or you come from the project, or you come from the poor side of town, amen. It had nothing to do with your character, amen. amen. Amen? Because some great people have come out of there. Oh, Amen. Oh, yeah. Good people have come out of there. Oh, yeah. Good people came out of there. The Savior came out of Nazareth. Yeah. Jesus. Yes. The Bible said, but his family was out there talking. I'm saying that to tell you, sometimes family don't see eye to eye with you. That's right. Amen? Amen. Amen. You got up this morning and went to church. You got family members that are still sitting at home. Amen? Amen. Sitting on the sofa doing everything but praising God. That's yeah. God's honest truth. Yeah. yeah. 
You know, and I tell you all the time, I come here, you know, on my way to church, I see days that I'm passing by. You know, now I got up early this morning to prepare myself to come and preach God's word. And I know some of y'all made an effort to get up and come here. That's why you're here this morning. You know, you got to put aside some of those things. You know, you might have thought you had something that was more important to do. But you came here anyway to praise God. Amen. Amen. And God will honor that and God will bless you for yes, that. He will. Amen. Because nothing is more important than serving God. Nothing. Right. Amen. As a matter of fact, Jesus said, if you love your mother, if you love your father, yeah. if you love your husband, yeah. wife, anybody more than me, you're not worthy of me. That's right. Yeah. But put... God first. Put Jesus yeah. first. Amen? Yeah. So I see the brothers out there, you know, standing on the corner. They got up this morning to go sit out on the corner. Oh, amen. Why not get up and go praise God this morning? Amen? Right. The Bible says, Father, you know, uh, forsake yourself, not the assembling together. Amen? Yeah. In other words, don't sit on the side and don't think you need to come into the house of God. Amen? Uh -huh. You can't do it by yourself. You need God. Amen? And God will bless you for what you're doing. Yes, amen? Amen. None of this is going, you know, un 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 unnoticed by God. He knows everything. He watches everything. Yeah. We make an effort to do all kinds of things in this world. Amen? Mm -hmm. It takes a lot to hate somebody. It takes a lot to get in trouble. Amen? And some folks just do it like it's nothing. But get up. Praise God. And even if you get up and if you're feeling bad and you can't make it to church, you make it to God. Amen? Amen. Just be right there and spread the Lord have mercy on my soul. In the name of Jesus, bless me. Bless my body, bless my spirit, bless my family, amen. Help to heal me, God. Help me to feel better. God understands your problem. God knows what you're dealing with. God knows what you're going through, amen. But make the effort, amen. amen. And God is not going to allow your effort to go unnoticed. As a matter of fact, right. that's the reason why his family was there. Because his family, in some cases, didn't understand what he was actually doing. As a matter of fact, some of them, they probably thought he was crazy. Uh -huh. You know? There are folk who think you're crazy because you've gone through so much, but you're still praising God. Amen. amen. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but you keep on praising God. Amen. Oh, yeah. Because in the end, you win. Amen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and let me tell you something. When it was all said and done, as a matter of fact, when it was all said and done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled, then all of his disciples forsake him, forsook him. In other words, they fled. And you'll find that in the book of Matthew. In other words, the disciples that he picked on the night when they realized that Jesus was about to be crucified, they left him. Yeah. Yeah. In that garden at Gethsemane, they left him. Brother Rashad, they were standing there with Jesus, promising him that you were going to be with you, we're going to stand with you, we will fight with you, we will die with you. And as soon as trouble came, they all scattered. Everybody that you start out with, you will not finish with. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Amen. And you know, got sometimes people will try to buck you up and tell you, oh man, just go in there and do this. You know, they're not going to be with you when you're in the middle of some trouble. When trouble comes, they'll walk away from you. You, know? you got friends, you got family, you got some people you thought that was close to you. The minute trouble happens, they walk away from you. Amen. You find yourself standing out there all by yourself. But you're never alone. Amen. When you have Jesus. Because the Bible says he's always watching because he loves you, he cares about you. He's going to always be there with you. And that's the reason why the Bible says we have this great high priest. Amen. And the high priest told us, he said, greater love had no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. And I call you friends. The high priest, this great high priest that we have, calls us his friends. And Jesus said, no greater love will you find than one who would do that. That he's willing to lay down his life for you. Everything Jesus did was for you. Amen? You know, so I'm here to tell you this morning that we have a great high priest. He can help you overcome gossip with the gospel. Amen? Because when folks are talking about you, don't you worry about that. God knows your heart. Amen? Don't let that stop you. You can endure pain because of his compassion. Because Jesus has so much love and compassion for you, for you, and he will help you overcome the pain and agony that you're going through. you got to just trust in him. You know, he will help you to, uh, to get through the mess you're going through because he will edify your mess with his message. And his message is 
love. The Bible says, he said, the two greatest commandments that you can hang all the laws and all the prophets on is number one, to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And then love your neighbor as you love yourself. These two, hold these two prophets, hold these two commandments, amen? And now I'm telling you that when you hold on to God, you will find that you are not rejected, but you are protected by Jesus, a great high priest. Somebody praise God this morning. Amen. And I love that verse that says, therefore let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace so that we might obtain mercy and find grace in a time of help. Our high priest commands us. He instructs us to come boldly before the throne of grace. Amen. Come boldly before the throne of grace. And sometimes when we're talking about and we're trying to get people to come to Jesus, sometimes people are a little afraid of that. And the reason why they're afraid, not that you have a physical fear, but sometimes people worry about what people will think about them. You know? They don't want to come to Jesus because they say, if I go to Jesus, people are going to look at me. And they're going to look at you anyway. Amen. Now, I don't want to go to Jesus because they're going to start talking about you. Oh, he thinks he's all this. Yes, you are all that. Amen. Because you become a child of God. And now you want the world to know that you are a child of God. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Amen. Anybody here? Are you ashamed of the gospel of Christ? Come on and pray to them this morning. God sent Jesus in this world to improve the spiritual and vital signs of all of God's people. Amen. That's why God wants to. Jesus is vital to your life. He's vital to your body. He's vital to your spirit. He's vital to your soul. Your spiritual temperature has got to be right with God. Amen. So when God takes your temperature, your spiritual temperature, when he's asking, because the Bible said that there is no in between. Amen. You cannot be lukewarm with God. Amen. You got to either be in or you're out. Amen. Amen. Jesus said you're either with me or you're against me. Those were his words. You're with me or you are against me. You know, there is no lukewarm, there's no hot or cold because he said if you're anything in between that, I will spew you out of my mouth. Right. Jesus said, I don't need you. You got to be with me. You got to be here. You got to be all in with Jesus. Amen? Amen. Jesus said, whoever's not with me, they're against me. Somebody needs a high priest this morning. Somebody needs a high priest working in their life this morning. Somebody's going through some problems this morning. Somebody needs God this morning. Somebody needs Jesus operating in their life this morning. You got to praise God this morning. Amen? He sympathizes with our weaknesses sometimes. As a matter of fact, the, the Bible says in 1 Timothy, said there is one God. There's one mediator between man and God, and that's the man, Jesus Christ. Amen. Right. He is your high priest. He's all you need. Right. You, there's no middle man anymore. There's Jesus. Amen. The high priest. Amen. I know sometimes some, some people will tell you that. You know, all you have to do is this. If you could do it by yourself, mm -hmm. okay. you know, you wouldn't have any problems in this world. If you had made yourself, you wouldn't have any problems in this world, but you did. Yeah, and right. you need God to fix it. Amen. And sometimes you just got to bring it to God and leave it there. That's right. When we say let go and let God, that means when you pray to God about something, leave it, stay right there with God. Amen. And then just hold on with confidence and patience and wait on the Lord to fix it for you. Amen. Yes. He can fix it. Amen. And I know what I'm talking about because I know the thing that God has done for me. Amen. 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 I was baptized when I was 12 years old. Amen. And I knew I wanted to get baptized. Amen. They didn't nobody have to tell me. I knew that's what I wanted. I wanted God working in my life. I used to pray for things that I didn't even understand. You know what I'm saying? You know, and sometimes we, you know, I've had, I had, I had complexes in my life when I was young. Sometimes I didn't think that I was good enough. I didn't think I was qualified enough. I didn't think I was strong enough. I didn't think I was fast enough. But everything I thought I wanted, I used to ask God about. You know, and I grew up in a family where but, but my brothers, uh, you know, I had five brothers. And all my brother, even my youngest brother, and you know sometimes when you're a young kid, you know, you want to grow up real fast, you know, but you just got to take your time, baby. See that beard you got better rush out? I always wanted one of those when I was a young boy. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and every one of my brothers had hair in their face. And somehow we think, when you're thinking like that as a young man, you know, you, you're thinking that that will make you a man. I wanted a mustache. <laughs> My younger brother had a mustache before me. My younger brother had a beard before me. You know, I was two years into college before I had any hair in my face. I'm serious. I was just growing up, my face, nothing. 
And every time when I was a little boy, I would go in there but before I was 12 years old, looking in the mirror every day, looking for the little peach fudge. Because I thought that was going to make me the man I need to be. Amen? And I'm looking at my brother, I'm like, oh, all of them got hair and sideburns and beards and all this kind of stuff. My face clean! <laughs> but boy, you watch out what you pray for. Amen? Amen. Now, the only reason why I don't wear it now, because if, I, if it all comes out now, it's all great. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not wearing just for men. <laughs> but the point is, that I can show you pictures of myself because once I started asking God, and trust me, I pray for that. As a little boy, I pray, Lord, give me a mustache. At least give me a mustache. That's what I say. My brothers got all this. I say, God, give me at least a mustache. And poof, God, I, my mustache was thicker than any of my brothers. As a matter of fact, if I let it grow out, you think I got a big caterpillar on my leg. <laughs> but God answers prayers, amen? And I, as a kid, I pray for all those crazy things. But let me tell you something, like the scripture says, you know, when I was a child, I thought like a child. I spoke like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Amen. Amen. Now I've learned to trust in God. Amen. Those things are only not, not important to me anymore. Amen. What's important to me is trusting and believing in God and walking in his grace, walking in his love. Amen. And it's okay to have those things. It's okay to aspire for those kind of things in your life because I'm saying pray for anything because as I grew up in this church, the pastor's wife, Sister Helen Taylor, used to tell us when we were little children in this church, she said, nothing is too big or too little to ask of God. Amen. Nothing. So when I was a little kid, I prayed for all those little bitty crazy things. And I found out God was blessing me with all those things. I just didn't understand how they was coming to me. Amen. And you never know how God is going to deliver you. You never know how God is going to bring the blessing. Amen. Sometimes he may take you east just to bring you around to the west. Right. You know, it might look like that, but you keep on trusting God. You keep on believing in God. Amen. You keep on reaching for the hills. Amen. Because when you aim high, you will always land high. Amen. Yeah. But contrary to conspiracy theory, you know, sometimes people, Jesus never yields to any temptation. And there's a lot of temptation out there. Amen. But you keep on trusting in God. He never had a sinful nature inside of him, no matter what the devil brought to him. As a matter of fact, when he was in the wilderness for 40 years, 40 days, 40 nights, you know he was hungry after that. And the first thing that happened to him after he came out of the wilderness, the devil showed up. Yeah. and challenged him and tempted him and yeah. told him, he said, look, I know you got to be hungry right now, but if you are who you say you are, command that these stones, right. these stones, these rocks be turned to bread. Uh -huh. And you know what? Jesus said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And I'm here to tell you this morning, you can trust in the word of God. Amen. Because that's all you need. Amen. He said, you got to trust in me. Amen. You got to trust in Jesus who committed no sin, who never yielded to the temptation of the devil. You know, he suffered all day long out on that old rugged cross. He was buried in a borrowed tomb in three days for he was out there hanging, amen, on that cross. Hung high and stretched wide, but when he was dead, they put him in a borrowed tomb. But I'm here to tell somebody this morning, early one Sunday morning, he rolled up with all power and glory. And now he's sitting there at the right hand of God, all sympathetic, all compassionate, and he's everything you need. He's the privilege, it's a privilege to come boldly before the throne of grace. Our high priest said, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you shall find it. Knock and the doors shall be open. Keep trusting in God this morning. Come on and pray this morning, y'all. I'm going to say this, y'all. Say this, y'all, and we got to get out of here. But I'm here to tell somebody this morning that the devil does not want you to come before the throne of grace. Your job is to he, his job is to keep you as far away from God's love. His job is to keep you away from God's mercy. His job is to keep you away from everything that God has for you. But don't you let nothing turn you around. You keep moving toward the cross of God because the cross of God is the glory of God. But I'm here to tell you that devil will try to tell you that you're not worth it. The devil will try to tell you that you're nothing but a sinner. The devil will tell you that you ain't nothing but a hypocrite. 
The devil will tell you that you are just a shame. The devil will tell you that you are a nothing but uh, guilty in the sight of God and that you ought to be afraid. But I'm here to tell you this morning, the devil is a lie. Amen. I'm here to tell you that we have this great high priest. So let everything that has breath praise God this morning. Just like Peter, he said, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The gates of hell will not prevail against you this morning. I'm here to tell somebody, we have a great high priest. He may not come when you want him to come, but he's always on time. I'm talking about a high priest. Somebody was paralyzed for 34 years, but healed in an instant because of a great high priest. Somebody was blind since their birth, but they were healed in an instant because of a great high priest. Somebody was suffering with an issue of blood for 12 years, but they heard Jesus was walking by, and they said in their own mind, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, I know that I would be made whole. And they were whole, made whole in an instant. I'm here to tell you that Jesus, that they hung high, stretched him wide, rolled up from the grave because the grave couldn't hold him. He overcame death itself. A great high priest sent saved, edified, magnified, glorified, justified, and sanctified by God sent to us this morning. We have a great high priest that it passed into the heavens. So let us come boldly. Boldly before the throne of grace that we might find mercy in a time of help. I don't know about you, but I love the Lord. He heard my cry. And I know that God loves you. I know that God cares about you. The Bible says, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. He said, for in my Father's house there are many mansions. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And that where I am, Jesus said, you will be also. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. We have a great high priest. A great high priest in the form of a Savior. So let's right now pray to God. In the sanctuary, if you're watching me right now on Facebook, YouTube, and our website, we pray to this great high priest that we have, Jesus. Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Jesus, present help in a time of need. And Lord, if we ever needed you, we need you right now. Let us pray to God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for your love, your kindness, your mercy, we thank you for this opportunity to come before the throne of grace. We all need you, God, this morning. We need you like we've never needed you before, God. We pray for your love, and I pray that you would bless every single soul, God, that's, that's, that's right here in the sanctuary, and everybody that hears my voice, God, that you hear their prayers, and that you will answer them, God. Bring into their lives peace, love, healing, deliverance and prosperity and not only bless them father but bless the families that they represent father we love you and we thank you for jesus we thank you for your holy spirit thank you. and we thank you for this opportunity god to love you to honor you to serve you and to praise your holy name we ask all of these prayers in jesus name amen, amen. come on and praise god for this great high priest that we have god is good and he's good all the time but right now, 